Hi guys, Hyperlative here, the Norwegian gamer, and this is some squad deathmatch from Bad Company 2. In this video, I wanted to give my thoughts on piracy. Um, just a short note, as you can see, the video isn't the longest, so I just wanted to give some sh short uh, thoughts on the matter, and it was really sparked by uh, Marcus Notch person, the guy behind Minecraft. Um, and I started thinking of some of the measures that different game companies go to to actually limit uh, piracy, like Ubisoft, who has the controversial always connected to the internet kind of DRM, where you need a constant internet connection to actually be able to play the game, even if you're just playing the single player part. When it was introduced, it was met with a lot of uh, a lot of anger from the gaming community, since you're not always gaming with an internet connection. And I've actually been limited by this myself when I was uh, on a train and wanted to play some Splinter Cell Conviction, and I wasn't able because I didn't have any internet connection at the moment. And uh, I think that, it, that it's the wrong way to go about the um, the problem and <laughs> Assassin's Creed Brotherhood on the PC is not even going to, going to feature the DRM so it kind of just tells me that it was a bad idea from the start but the thing is I get where they're coming from because they're getting fed up with people hiring their games so I understand it the only thing is they need to introduce some kind of um, anti-piracy measure that doesn't um, uh, that doesn't annoy the players or the <laughs> gamers like the Steam DRM does. The Steam DRM just works and the players never see any of it. It just... <laughs> if the Steam DRM is used players don't even recognize that it's there. It's just automatic for the player. All they need to do is log into Steam and it just works and it's wonderful. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to comment on is that a lot of game companies seem to think that one pirated copy of a game is one lost sale. And I don't think that's the case a lot of the time. To take an example from my own experience, I pirated Far Cry 2 and Borderlands. But at a later date, I ended up buying Borderlands because I wanted to be able to play it online with some of my friends. And to do that, it's easier to just buy the game and use the game spy protection that they've implemented. Now, Far Cry, however, I didn't like that game, so I only played like 15 minutes of that game. And then I just put it away, just deleted it again because I, it wasn't my thing. I didn't float my boat, so. I never ended up playing that game anymore, and in that case, I would probably have lost some money if I if I went and bought it. But instead, I just pirated, traded out, figured, nah, this is not for me, and just deleted it again. And it wasn't a lost sale. If if they'd put out a demo, I probably would have played that and found out that meh, this isn't for me. So, in many cases, it may just be a demo kind of deal when people pirate their games, or they just want to try the games out. And in some cases, people may pirate the game and play it for a while and enjoy the game and never end up buying it. But the fact is, if it weren't for free, if they didn't get it for free, they wouldn't play the game at all. So, they wouldn't uh, buy the game. Uh, yeah, look at that silly idiot, the Rambo revives. Um, they wouldn't buy the game anyways, so if they pirate it or not, the game company is not going to get a sale out of that. They're not, because the, peop the person wouldn't buy it if he had to, and he only pirated it because out of convenience that he actually could. So that's the end of the video. I end up going 19 and 5, it was quite a nice round. And it was actually with a scar, uh, and I didn't realize that it was that good before that round. So, I hope to see you next time. Snackis.